Hi, and good morning. I'm the Reverend Dr. Cheryl Gaver, Presbyterian Minister of Three Congregations in Eastern Ontario, and thank you for joining us for this week's Puzzles in Faith. This week's question is how can Jesus be fully human and fully divine? The simple answer, we don't know. It's one of those things that we've come up with over the centuries and we don't fully understand it, but somehow we know it's true. So while I can't explain how Jesus can be both 100% human and 100% divine at the same time, I can explain or demonstrate a little bit of how we got there. So let's start with the assumption, Jesus is a fully human being. He's not defined, he's just a human being. He does miracles, including walking on water, feeding 5,000, raising people from the dead. Well, maybe the number of miracles is a little much, but some of the prophets did pretty good too. So Jesus shows himself well in line of being another prophet. And then he started talking about being lifted up and somehow that's, that's sort of throwing us back to Moses and the snake that's being lifted up on a pole. And if you look on it, you, you're, you're cured, you have life. And Jesus is sort of putting himself in that same thing. And then when, when you've got you know, passages of for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, these passages seem to indicate, well, they're part of the core Christian message of God's love for us that is so deep that he's willing to sacrifice himself. Oh, but Jesus is a human being. God didn't sacrifice himself. Jesus died on the cross. So the whole gospel is garbage. And then you have Jesus rising from the dead. And he doesn't rise from the dead. He's not raised from the dead. He's resurrected because he doesn't come back to life like resuscitated. He comes back to life and is transformed where sometimes he's solid, sometimes he's not. He pops in, he pops out. He's a ghost, but he's not a ghost. He can eat with you. And things like that, those kind of experiences. And somewhere they just kept saying, this is not an ordinary human being. This is someone who's more than a human being. Okay, so we know Jesus is not just a human being. What if he's just God, 100% God, and that's it? Well, again, we've destroyed the gospel. One of the big questions is, does God know the suffering that people go through? And the answer is yes. The Old Testament answer is yes. The New Testament answer is yes. And then we've got he, one of the core messages in Christianity is God knows because he has lived among us as a human being. He knows what it is to be lonely, to have friends, to, be, to rejoice at a wedding, to be afraid of dying. He understands because he's gone through it. And so he can minister to us in our fears because he's gone through it. But if God, if Jesus was only God, then he really didn't go through anything. He was just an actor pretending to go through it all. And again, we've destroyed the gospel. So for people who, who really encountered Jesus or God and God's love, and they said, this is not right. He's not just a human being. He's not just God. Somehow he's a combination. Ah, maybe he's 50-50. Well, then he'd be a demigod, something like Hercules. Well, Hercules was pretty strong. I don't think he was particularly wiser than the ordinary human being. And I don't think he was immortal. He might have lived longer and maybe was transformed in some way, but he certainly wasn't immortal. And he didn't do miracles of any kind. And when you look at 
any of the Greek demigods, they seem to have human failings. They're just more resources to draw on. That doesn't fit Jesus at all. Because what we see in Jesus, someone who's, whose character is, is so much better than the best of us. And the compassion is greater. The wisdom is greater. And then, yeah. So what are we left with? Jesus is more than a human being, more than God. He's somehow a combination of both. He's not a demigod of 50-50. And that really does only leave us with one alternative, that he is fully God and fully human in one body. And how that works, we don't know. But none of the ex other explanations fit. This is the best one. And we don't see any drawbacks to it, except that we can't figure it out the math and the mechanics of it. But if that's the only limitation is our ability to understand it, we're willing to go with it. So you may not be satisfied. Take your best shot. Try to figure out how we can proclaim God came to us as a human being, lived among us, died, experienced what we went through as Jesus, and who knows, maybe you'll be the next theologian, uh, world-class theologian. For us, we don't know. But we do know, or we do recognize the truth. So once again, I'm the Reverend Dr. Cheryl Gaver, and thank you for joining us for this week's Puzzles in Faith. Next week, something about being born again. What does that mean? Take care. God bless and have a great week. Bye-bye.